right in this video I just want to kind of address the uh, fact that you know the idea that traffic is is very abundant traffic is everywhere I know when you're just starting out you're just like I need more traffic you know I need to get my website found or I need to get my offer found when the truth is there is an unlimited amount of traffic out there for you to be able to tap into different you know different languages uh, all, all different parts of the world they have traffic all over the world there's different you know just tons of different varieties of traffic there's pay to click pay per view there's solo ad traffic you know e other types of email traffic um as you can see here um, on my website imsource.org got cheap traffic you know these little you know kind of bot traffic there's retargeting there's um um <clears throat> there's and then there's unique um, marketplaces like buy sell ads stumble upon twitter you know all these different ways to get traffic to your offer and each one of them is a little different so you know you really need to educate yourself on the traffic source kind of the the demographic behind um, that that audience and those uh, those marketplaces um, and really just do a lot of testing in this course I'm going to go over uh, a couple of different um, a couple different of these uh, marketplaces and a couple of these uh, resources but there's a whole bunch more that I include here on the website and again it's just it's a matter of just picking one and and, and sticking with it and uh, just figuring out how it works and because they each have a different purpose, you know, and some are more effective than others on specific offers. So, um, you know, just take that into so just take that into consideration as you're going through this course. You know, you may have tried some of these, and you may think they're you know garbage. You may not have had any luck, or you may not have uh, heard of any of these um, traffic sources that I'm going to be sharing with you inside. And so you may be kind of hesitant, but you know, as long as you have a structured sales funnel um, set up. Um, uh, then you are going to be way ahead of the competition. A lot of people just buy these, um, you know, buy traffic without any kind of sales funnel, without any kind of tracking setup. There's no way to track or to gauge, you know, how well they're doing. See, the difference between beginner marketers and, you know, intermediate and advanced marketers is the advanced marketers test and track everything and they know their numbers. So, you know, where the uh, beginner marketer may be sending a direct you know direct traffic to an offer and, and you know they don't get sales immediately they say that um, you know they think that that traffic sucks and um, they're you know it's a waste of money waste of time well the longer you test and the more you know your numbers the more advanced you know traffic buyer media buyer out there who knows their numbers they can you know be profitable with the same traffic and maybe even afford to pay more for the traffic because they again know their numbers they know what their customer lifetime value is and again this is only going to come with time it's only going to come with testing and trafficking but if you know later down the road that your customer is you know in six months it's going to be worth at least thirty dollars for you you can pay a dollar three dollars five dollars per click or per lead in order to acquire that customer because you're at least going to be canceling out later down the road or at least you're going to be making a little bit of profit later down the road so you can afford to buy as much traffic as you can possibly get your hands on so just a couple of key points I want to point out there you know every traffic source is different uh, and it's very very abundant so so just go through this course completely before you you know ask any questions or make any comments and uh, I, you're going to get a lot of insights into traffic but then afterwards if you have any questions or along the way um, feel free to reach out to me or uh, ask a comment in the discussions area and I'll be uh, sure to um, respond to that. All right, In this video I want to go over some banner advertising networks that you can you know tap into different um, different publishers audiences and get your uh, banner ad for your product or your service or whatever you're trying to promote and get traffic to uh, tap into audiences that people have already created so one of the um, most popular networks is called buy sell ads.com uh, if you go here you know if you're a publisher you can uh, list your website on here to um, get revenue for your website or if you're an advertiser you can click here and uh, go through this um, you know sign up as an advertiser here I'm just gonna come down here to the marketplace show you different uh, the different options so you've got all these different categories of uh, websites here and the great thing about buy sale ads it kinda shows you the average number of impressions or so and they're becoming more and more popular getting more mainstream sites here uh, again uh, 
you know, it's kind of hit or miss with these um, banner ads. Um, it's great that you have the option and opportunity to advertise and have a presence on these domains, but you may not see a big click-through rate. Um, but you know, it's it's cool that you're able to just position yourself on these authority websites and and websites that have already built up a presence and a branding. Um, you've got the opportunity to advertise there, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you have a more uh, you know, niche specific, uh, kind of the, the Christian uh, related product, then there's this website called Beacon Ads that I came across. It looks like it's, it may even be owned by Buy Sell Ads because it's the same format here, but looks like it's more, um, you know, Christian related websites. Um, so if your uh, product is, so if your product is something that can be promoted, to this demographic, then this is kind of a, a niche banner uh, marketplace that you know would be great to tap into if um, you know this is your ideal demographic. This is one that I recently you know just found today by Site Ads. It's kind of one I haven't really heard too much about. I'm not sure how great this one is or not, but it looks like the prices are a little bit cheaper here. Um, so those are all. Um, platforms to explore. I would start uh, with buy sell ads unless you know your niche or your product falls. You know you think this demographic would be a good um, you know target audience for whatever service that you have. But uh, buy sell ads is a great place to start, and you can actually um, you know you click on these advertisers, and some people will have you know banner impressions. You'll have different um, places on the site that you can advertise. And uh, some people will even um, give you the option to tweet out your message to their audience if they have a Twitter presence. And then uh, I want to throw this in there too. Site Scout is a um, a remnant um, banner advertising self serve platform. So basically, what that means is all the unsold advertising inventory on places like um, Google and some of these other large networks they have. You know, millions and millions of these unsold impressions that just never get sold. So they uh, bring them to a platform like Site Scout, and you're able to bid on them. So you're able to have the opportunity to show up on some of these big, um, you know, high traffic websites for a lot cheaper than you would get it. Basically, you're getting it for wholesale um, here. Um, but you know, this is again something you'll have to just play with and, and test and track. Um, but you have the option to, or the opportunity to advertise on all these different big websites through this um, platform. You get access to all uh, a lot of different advertising inventory through this platform. So pretty cool. I uh, just want to show, share that. You may see better results here than you know just you know and one of these um, websites so another option here you know there's so many different um, methods and media uh, ways to different uh, to advertise your product and service across the web so there's all these different options um, banner advertising ones is one that's been around you know just as long as email has um, you know it's it's still around and you know they're there's these uh, marketplaces like buy sell ads that make it easy for you to approach these websites because traditionally you would have to reach out to them yourself manually and kind of go back and forth with the webmaster, the site owner, and try to get your uh, ad or offer posted there. Um, but they make it simple for you, make it easy by uh, they develop this marketplace for you. So just another app advertising option and um, vehicle to get your uh, message out to a wider audience so check out these um, so check out these solutions you know if you're trying to expand your reach then these are great um, places to start All right in this video I just want to do a very brief overview of Bing Yahoo ads so kind of to compete against um, Google which Google is the dominant force the dominant player in you know search engine traffic that's where most people and at least in the US and in English speaking countries go to do their searches but there's also Bing and Yahoo and they've kind of teamed up combined forces and you know while most traffic while most search engine traffic is through Google the Bing and, and, and Yahoo still gets a decent amount of traffic and so I wanted to present this option this solution as a, another kind of an alternative uh, advertising solution to Google cuz um you know Google's not very affiliate friendly anymore they used to be back in the day when they first started and then you know several years ago they just um you know dropped the hammer and just you know 
canceled all these affiliate accounts overnight. A lot of people lost their accounts. And so um, I'm not really covering Google ads in this um, training series because, um, you know, it's not that affiliate marketing friendly. Um, I've had my account shut down or at least my advertising side of my account shut down just because I accidentally promoted an affiliate link uh, and Bing is a little bit more affiliate marketer friendly and uh, again they still have a decent amount of search traffic and from what I've heard from uh, marketers that advertise there uh, is that you know the the conversions tend to be uh, higher sometimes um, again you don't have access to as much traffic but it is a place where traffic still exists so you know if you're looking to expand your reach expand your you know your um advertising of whatever it is you're trying to uh, get the word out and, and attract new customers this is another pool of traffic that you can tap into so just want to bring this to your attention there'll be a place where you can uh, check out and learn more about Bing ads but it's very simple to get signed up it works um, very similar to um, Google ads because you're you have they have a lot of the same features um, you know you can uh, have text-based ads or advertise uh, I think they have display ads as well with similar to the Google uh, display network so it's very similar it's just mostly uh, as an alternative for the Google advertising network if you don't want to uh, start there or, um, you know even uh, explore that at all uh, you've got the Bing Yahoo ads and it's you know um, very very simple to get signed up for but you can just type in Bing Yahoo ads and it'll take you to a, either a screen like this where you can go ahead and sign up for an account but just one thing to add uh, you know while it's very simple and you don't need a lot of money to get started, um, I would probably, um, depending on what niche you're in, um, you know, if it's a more of a a big niche like the health, wealth, love, then I might try Bing ads. But if it's a smaller niche, you know, you may want to try some of these other solutions um, that. Uh, but, but before you, at least with the display side for the search side, maybe, but for the display side and banners, usually those get a lot less click through rates on a, uh, generally, at least uh, unless you're a more advanced marketer and know a little bit more about copywriting and conversion. So that's my only tip there. So, um, you know, just want to share this as another option for advertising. You know, there's, uh, this is the whole point of um, these videos is to kind of give you all these different advertising options. I'm um, not really going into detail of each one but just to kind of let you know what's out there what your options are so when you get a chance definitely check out Bing ads um, and again it's a great source for um, targeted traffic and it's a great alternative to Google right in this video I want to talk about something that's extremely extremely important and it's copywriting you know uh, this is a course about traffic and a lot of people that are just starting out in internet marketing and even some more more advanced marketers they think that they have a traffic problem and traffic is rarely ever going to be your issue because there's always someone that's willing to sell you traffic um, there's all different kinds of traffic sources out there so that's never going to be a problem what you're going to most likely face is a conversion problem meaning your your sales copy it doesn't convert it doesn't convert um, visitors into leads it doesn't convert those leads into sales and so your campaigns are just not going to be profitable based on your copy based on your message and so you really need to refine that you really need to get good at copywriting if you want to be a successful marketer because again traffic is everywhere anybody can create an offer but you know a lot of people say you know if you have the offer or you don't have traffic nobody's gonna find you sure but if you have a great offer you have the right traffic but you have a sucky sucky offer a sucky um, you know sales message then you know, yeah, you're going to get like 1% of people that are going to buy it, but it could have been 5, 10, 20%, you know, so learning to, you know, and I'm not saying you have to become a copywriting master, but just learning a few tips and tricks is going to dramatically increase your, your, your profit in your business. Um, and so I want to share with you a couple different resources and uh, there's going to be more resources that I'm going to list in this, uh, you know, in the you know resources or copywriting section of this course um, but I just want to share a couple with you in this video um, but I'm gonna list a couple more links in the, the resources section but um, these are a couple of resources you can check out that can help you improve your copy and I'm more focused on you know helping you improve your copy quickly because I understand you're probably not really you know interested in 
putting in the time and becoming a master at copy. Now, the more that you do, the more results you see. You may get more and more interested in copywriting and conversion, but you're probably more focused on your product or your service, and I get that. So um, the first resource is a free resource. Uh, it's called uh, the Gary Hobart Letter. Gary Hobart was one of the greatest um, copywriters of the uh, 20th century, and he um, you know, has all those letters. His kids uploaded his letters here on this archive. If you visit this website, you can check them all out. And the best use of these um, letters is to go through, read them, and then print them out, and then write them all by hand. That's the fastest, the best way to really, you know, have this stuff just sink into your head and um, make you become a better copywriter basically by writing. I know it doesn't, you know, it sounds too easy um, and you, you probably want like a push button, you know, template or something like that, but that is what all the other, you know, great copywriters have done and that's that's why they're great because they've actually taken the time to sit down and handwrite these letters, rewrite them, and then that starts, you know, as you're writing them, you start to develop a a flow and a structure of your own writing and you're going to obviously have your own writing style and unique style but you can borrow a lot of the elements that these master copywriters use so this is a free resource for people that are uh, you know want something for you know not a lot of investment other than your time uh, this is a, a massive uh, valuable resource for copywriting another solution kind of along the same lines is called copy hour so the first one was Gary Halbert letters just his letters copy hour is basically kind of a uh, a mixture of what I just shared plus a little bit of that push button element so you're still going to be having assignments and writing um, effective sales copy by hand but it's going to deliver it to you in a daily email assignment so you have one assignment every day and you've got a couple different levels here if you want to do the 90 day 182 uh, assignment day or um, this you know one every single day of the year uh, this is going to be good enough for most people if you want to really take your skills to the next level and just you know have a little bit more resources at your disposal um, and you know examples of copywriting then you can sign up for this it's not a lot more it's only like 50 bucks more and you know if you're gonna this one's obviously just to get you to sign up for this because they're the same price but you know for a beginner you know 137 it's gonna be um, this is I believe is going to be the fastest way for you to go from like I don't know anything about copywriting to knowing enough to be dangerous with your sales copies um, and you know if you want to take things further than that you can definitely do it but I think that's going to be good enough for most um, marketers or most people that are just trying to make uh, you know a couple thousand bucks online um, each month um, that's that's my top resource there and then another resource is by Dan Kennedy he's a, a very well-known living copywriter he's got a book called the ultimate sales letter and just kind of uh, lays out a structure and a format in this book for writing effective sales copy so you know books are great things a lot of people uh, a lot of the smartest people in the world read books every single day every single month and I know that's not popular these days with all this you know digital stuff but books there's a lot of valuable information inside of books and uh, they're very inexpensive so I highly recommend checking this out it's only like 13 bucks um, uh, Copy Hackers, this is another uh, website. It's got a bunch of uh, guides that you can buy, and they're all good. I've been through all of them. Um, so it's you know it's a very good resource for learning how to write copy. They've got a lot of great uh, blog posts as well. And then a community, if you want some kind of feedback so you're not just um, out there on your own, then I recommend this community called Copy Chief. It's uh, by Kevin Rogers, who is a uh, master copywriter. He's also got a podcast here. Uh, but it's a very inexpensive uh, membership that you can you know, throw up your copy. You know, if you're working on um, a sales page or a sales hook, then you can you know, um, toss around the idea with the community, get feedback there, and it's going to be a great resource for you. So those are a couple of copywriting resources that I uh, recommend you check out. And again, I'm, I'm more focused 
focused on you getting from you know zero to a proficient copywriter in the least amount of time I'm not this isn't a copywriting course I don't expect you to um, have a great degree of interest in copywriting but it is the most effective skill that you can learn as a, a marketer as a salesperson and everything else once you master this it just becomes a lot easier because again traffic is everywhere it's, it's very abundant um, and you can come up with product products all day you know but you got to know how to sell them in order to make money so these are a couple of resources that I highly recommend you check out um, that are going to drastically improve your effectiveness with writing uh, effective sales copy all right in this video I'm going to do a super basic overview of Facebook advertising so Facebook ads have been around for a couple of years now this is where most of the uh, internet marketers and the make money online kind of niches gravitate to towards because it's just easier there aren't as much like rules and regulations as places like Google and some of the other advertising networks you don't need a big budget to start and it allows you to the um, the opportunity and the you know the ability to target uh, laser target your demographic down by age you know likes interest location so you've got a lot of different targeting options here there's a lot of there's you know it's a big big audience here on Facebook so a lot of people a pool of a lot of people to to tap into uh, that you can siphon into your sales funnels and stuff so basically obviously you're gonna need a, so first obviously you're gonna need a Facebook account so if you don't have one you're gonna need to set one up if you're not on here for social media purposes and socializing and stuff and then at least set up one for your business or your your product and offer uh, that you're trying to promote so once you set up your Facebook account you can come down here under create ads and then it gives you a couple different options so based on whatever option here you select it's going to optimize your campaign for this type of a result so if you want to boost your post on a, uh, um, a fan page or promote a page or just to send traffic to your website or you help you want or you want to help increase the conversions to your websites or you want to get installs for an app of yours or some of these other options uh, they recently introduced um, video of views and videos and being able to advertise videos so this is a new option and all this stuff it just it changes over time so you know you know again this isn't a full course on how to use uh, you know all these different advertising platforms or how to use Facebook specifically this is just kind of an introduction because and, and I'm gonna give you the basics because all these little options and stuff that you see here they they change over time so that's something to get used to um, usually as soon as you kind of get comfortable with the advertising platform they change it tweak it a little bit so you're just going to have to learn to kind of um, you know roll with these changes because you can't really do anything over them um, because you can't really do anything with them you just have to learn to adapt so I, for this example and this is uh, what I usually uh, sent uh, is and this is what I usually choose is send people to your website so I've got a couple of different websites that I've advertised in the past. I'm just going to select uh, this one here. Um, if you don't have one, you know, if you've advertised in the past, you can uh, pull them up here. And then it gives you an option for a, a, a tracking pixel here, uh, whether it be a conversion pixel or just a regular tracking pixel. I'm going to go over that in, in just a few minutes, but if this particular web page that you are, um, you know, sending traffic to, if you have a um, tracking pixel you can set that up here I'm just gonna leave that uh, blank for now click continue and then it gives you all these different options here for your advertising so this is just wide open there's so many different things that you can target um, you've got you know I'm in the US so I've got the US by default you've got uh, countries if you want to add more countries if you want to include or exclude certain countries you can do that here you can um, target by age um, male or female languages and as you adjust this then this you know bar is going to kind of um, uh, adjust over here you're gonna see all your different you know audience your specific audience your potential reach it's gonna kind of calculate that so if I change this to you know maybe 25 to 65 that number is going to adjust there <clears throat> and then you've got interest you've got all different kinds of interest um, so this kind of helps you select these different interests here but they're very broad so if you have like I'm an internet marketer if you have um, you might want to type in like internet marketing 
and uh, type in a search term there and if you click one of them it gives you all these options but if you click one it's going to give you other related um, um, topics or interests here so if you just type in a generic term related to your niche or the people that you're trying to target then it's going to give you a couple of other options here to help drill down and kind of refine that audience as you're as you're building and you've also got on um, behaviors that you can target so you can go through these this is a uh, really cool here actually for financial you know if, if you're targeting like people that have a um, you know spend a, a certain amount let's see I think can't remember where that's at but um you know you know if you want to target investors people that have money you can do that here let's see uh, connections Oh, here's where the um, demographics are. So uh, under languages, this is kind of hidden here, but there's some valuable, you know, uh, targeting information here. You've got relationships, uh, education level. So if you want to target just people that have high school, uh, you know, degrees or, or just um, – so if you want to target people that just have university level degrees, uh, specific types of work, uh, employers, job titles, industries, financial, so you can target people by their income or their net worth, and uh, are they a homeowner? You've got all these different um, awesome targeting, um, you know, options here that other advertising platforms don't give you access to. So it's really, really cool that Facebook gives you access to all that data that you know you can just laser target. You have basically the whole world at your um, fingertips here that you can reach out to. And then once you get down here to the bottom, you can set your advertising budget, whether you want to be a daily budget or lifetime budget. You, know, you can start with just five bucks and just test it out. You can see kind of your estimated daily reach, how many people that's going to potentially reach. Um, if you just decide to set a start and end date and a, a lifetime budget, let's see, I believe that you can um, you can set that. And oh, here's where I was going to show you ad scheduling. So you can run it all the time, or this is really cool. If you have, I believe you need it set to lifetime budget, but if you have it set to lifetime budget, then you can run the ads on a schedule so it's really cool so as you refine your ads you can um, you know create new ones and as you kind of see when your conversions happen you can specifically um, schedule to run the ad not just all day all the time but at specific hours on specific days so Facebook gives you a lot of really awesome options to just laser target and hone in on exactly who your audience is and exactly when you know when to target them specifically what days what times um, and then you've got um, you know you can give your ad set a name here and then here at the bottom this is where you're going to put your images uh, you know in your, your for your ads so you are going to need to uh, probably set up a, a Facebook fan page um, and that's going to allow you to advertise like in the news feed don't believe you need one in just the um, just for the sidebar just for the right sidebar but it shows you what your um, ads are going to look like here on the desktop mobile right sidebar and um, you know I mostly, for most of my stuff, I just advertise in the right sidebar because for me that gets the most clicks and the most conversions. But you know, you do have more real estate here for the um, for the news feed. It's a lot bigger, but my clicks haven't been as much, um, and it's usually more expensive in my experience and my results. So I usually just remove that and remove. Um, uh, the news feed, the mobile news feed, and I just usually stick with the um, the desktop right column, and then you can adjust the headline here, uh, the description, and you know the destination URL, um, and and they actually used to not have this for the you know basic advertising here. So again, another thing that changes you know over time, and let's see. Um, that you don't have a call to action button it looks like you still you don't have that on the right hand um, column but on the desktop news feed you do so that's one of the benefits if you have if you're advertising on the news feed then you do have the, the call to action button and some uh, other options here that looks like they're kind of making their way into the right hand um, 
column at here. So um, this used to be smaller, it's a lot larger now. So again, another thing that changes uh, a lot. And then once you're done here, you can come down here to click place order and uh, it'll just take a few minutes, probably uh, you know an hour at most to probably get your ad uh, approved. And um, then once you're done, you can make variations of that ad. Um, very quickly. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, and I, I'm not sure if this is still just open to people in the US, but one thing that's going to help you get some more insight into your audience is once you are selecting your interest here and your behaviors, I would just kind of you know copy and paste those um, you know, you'll have all your audience details over here on the right side. I'll just copy and paste those into like a Word file or a document of some sorts and then come back up here to um, you know the top and then come over here to manage ads instead of create ads before you you know before you um, create the ad um, you're just kind of refining it you know in this process and then come down here under manage ads and then come up here to tools click audience insights and then I'm just going to click um, everyone on Facebook and then what's useful about this tool is you can plug in that those demographics and the you know uh, interest that you just refined down in your, your ad manager there you're you know creating that ad and you can kind of see insights into where your you know wh where is your advertising dollars best spent so you may find that of your interest you know you may be targeting 18 to you know, any but you may find that the bulk of your demographic is actually in the 25 to 54 zone which I found most of my interest are so you know, while you could possibly get some clicks and conversions from 18 to 24 and 55 to 65 plus, you know, why not just advertising in this block of, um, you know, demographic here and just remove these, don't even target these because there's so few people in there interested in what you have to offer or sell or, you know, based on your demographics that you've selected. So before you actually create your ad, I would plug in your likes and interests and, and demographics into the, the um, you know, audience insights tool and kind of see... Uh, get some insights into that particular audience, and then once you're done, you can you can actually create a custom audience from um, from these likes and interests that you can then plug into your ads that you can use again and again and again. Um, so once you refine this, uh, then you can come up here to save um, and save that custom audience. And then once you're creating an ad, let's go ahead and create an ad. I'm just going to select um, send people to my website again and then instead of selecting all of these little interests here you can speed up the process by just choosing a custom audience click here and then you know select one of your custom audiences and bam you're ready to go and you can come down here you know uh, customize your ad and your ad copy and then go ahead and place the order so that'll help you save some time in the future by um, you know doing some uh, putting in the effort on the front end and um, and then you can just create those custom audiences out of those you know audiences that you create and kind of refine through the audiences insights tab so that's how to create an ad in Facebook it's you know this is a very basic overview all right, in this video, I want to go over a couple of different squeeze page or landing page tools. So, so what you're going to find when I talk about kind of the basic funnel, uh, the basic flow of a funnel, if you've gone through that or uh, once you get to that point in the course, um, you're going to need some sort of uh, squeeze page tool, landing page tool. You know, most people aren't programmers used to have to do this manually and, you know, lay all this out by hand. And it was very time and labor intensive. Now we've got a lot of um, cool tools that make it easy for non-designers, non-techie people to just go in there, drag and drop a bunch of elements, um, create uh, really high converting landing pages and squeeze pages and sales pages and funnels. Uh, in a very short amount of time so you can focus on the bigger picture of your marketing so um, one of the you know 
tools that kind of was the flagship a tool of um, building landing pages and squeeze pages is called lead pages so lead pages has changed uh, a lot over the years it's um, the pricing kind of uh, fluctuates um, you know if you get in now um, you know that's probably the best price that you're ever going to get it because it because it tends to always go up in time but um, they always you know add more and more value to it but that's one thing to consider but uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of lead pages is the advantages is it's super fast uh, you don't have to put a lot of thought into the landing page design they pretty much got a bunch of free templates in there and depending on what level that you come in at you 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 can um, you have a degree of customization with uh, the the lead pages um, and you know you can have them completely custom at the top level but um, at the basic level you can uh, your degree of customization is basically changing out the text and the colors and things like that but they've done all the work and um, get deliver some templates that already convert very highly you just have to replace it with your message your images and things like that so it's very fast uh, you can create unlimited um, landing pages squeeze pages and things like that uh, you can split test very easily with it so you can decide on you know winning um, winning campaigns winning um, squeeze pages so those are some of the advantages of lead pages um the one downside to it in my you know experience is since i'm kind of a design oriented person uh, they they don't have like a drag and drop feature um it's just kind of check boxes and stuff and again they 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 already convert very high they're not going to give you templates that don't convert cuz that's their whole uh reason you know they exist is to create um high converting squeeze pages and landing pages for their customers but they you know if you wanted to you know move things around and customize it 100% then you're not really able to do that you don't have a lot of those features uh, unless you go through some sort of a lead pages you know custom coder designer which that can be expensive but it's entirely possible if you want to go that route but that is one option uh, it again for the absolute beginner uh, it is actually a good option uh, even for the you know just the standard level here to just create you know these unlimited landing pages um, and you can it also has a bunch of other features so if you have a blog you they have a bunch of other features and tools and plugins that you can you know capture leads on your blog and things like that so you know it does have a lot of features uh, but that is one option the other option and kind of my preferred solution is called click funnel so click funnel has only been around for about a year at the time we making this video and I love it because you can create all kinds of different um, complete funnels so not just squeeze pages and yes you can technically create funnels with lead pages but you have to create all the pages you know separately whereas with click funnels um, each project is basically a funnel so you've got like opt-in funnels uh, webinar registration page funnels uh, sales page funnels um, you know you can have these really extensive um, you know sales funnels that you build with click funnels which is great so and and it's also got an element of drag and drop features so it makes it really really easy to just click and drag and add um, text and videos and um, you know content to create a completely customized uh, landing page or squeeze pages so these are the the main two tools that I would recommend going with either lead pages or click funnels depending on if you are you know really designerish like myself you may want to opt for uh, click funnels if you don't care so much about the design you're just like I'm just gonna go with what's working and want something affordable and I just need to really be able to change my text and you know the, the opt-in button color um, then lead pages is what I would recommend so those are two great solutions to consider um, for your offers for your uh, lead magnets um, that I recommend you check out for sending tr that initial traffic to your initial paid traffic so you can capture that lead so that you can at least remarket to them if they don't buy it on that first impression. All right, in this video, I want to go over advertising on Pinterest using uh, Pinterest ads and promoted pins. So, this feature is only available to uh, people with business accounts right now. I believe you can promote 
uh, with just a regular account, but you have to join a waiting list and then get approved. So it's easier just to sign up for a free business account, and then through that you should be able to uh, just automatically be able to promote uh, your pins through uh, through your you know business uh, your Pinterest business account. So it's very very simple. I'm just going to go over log in real quickly and kind of go over the basics of the Pinterest advertising platform. Right, so once you log in, I've just got this uh, account that I manage here. Once you log in, you've got this uh, dashboard, and uh, I'm just going to go over the basics. You've got some guides here, some helpful tips and tutorials that can help you get started, but it's really, really simple. Pinterest makes it very simple, and they've uh, at the time of me making this video, they just recently launched their advertising platform in the last uh, several months, the last year or so. So they, you know, they've been developing this audience, this uh, marketplace, this platform of all this traffic and users and they're now giving you the opportunity to advertise to that audience so it's a great place to take advantage so it's a great opportunity to take advantage of and also uh, you know what what makes it unique is that you know wherever there's a lot of traffic whenever they open the gates to advertisers then you have a, a unique opportunity there that you know it's not saturated like Facebook's and um, you know the Google's out there because that is a new traffic source that has never really been opened up to advertisers so you've got that opportunity of being one of the first ones to uh, to get to test that traffic out so you have a, a unique advantage there as opposed to people that have uh, that advertise on Facebook Facebook is great but you know a lot of things have changed over the years as advertisers have come in um, you know people are used to seeing ads there and so forth so I'm just going to uh, create a, a simple ad here you've got a couple different types of ads you can create engagement campaigns and traffic campaigns and like I said this may change by the time you create your account uh, when I first uh, logged into my ads account it didn't look anything like this so these dashboards and these things tend to change over time uh, and you know these options weren't there before it was just basically create an ad now they've uh, segmented into these two different types of ads so you can uh, promote you know based on you know how much engagement you want with the pin or drive uh, specifically to drive traffic to your website so I'm just gonna click this drive traffic campaign and uh, again you've got kind of the uh, same little option here I'm just going to click drive traffic I'm just going to give it a test uh, test one for the um, name here if you want to select an end date uh, for the daily budget I'm just going to put 10 and again as you're going along you've got some little options here so if you uh, need help with uh, you know how budgets work you can click that learn more click pick a pin now to advertise um, I don't believe you're going to be able to um, advertise if you don't have pins so you need to go ahead and create a pin uh, create something that you know a pin that you would like to promote first and then once you get to this point you can select the pin that you want to um, get the engagement on or drive the traffic to so I'm just gonna select this one and then that's gonna take us to this uh, one of these last pages here so I'm just going to you know you can keep the title here or you can give your promoted pin a name. You can type something in here. Um, and then you can target your um, you target the traffic based on specific search terms. So if you, you know, whatever it is you're promoting, you can target people searching for certain search phrases and terms on the Pinterest marketplace, the Pinterest platform there. So you can specifically show your pin to that demographic. So you can, you know, it's give you some suggestions here. Um, this is a uh, business account about cleaning and vacuum so it's got some suggestions here cleaning tips and as you add more it'll give you some more suggestions here but um, you know it's pretty self-explanatory you can just type in the keywords and phrases that relate to whatever it is you're trying to promote there and if you hover over you can see what that ad is going to look like it's your pin basically and the great thing about Pinterest right now it's not open to um, the rest of the world so you're only targeting US locations so you can pick specific specific locations or you can just target the whole US which is awesome for marketers because usually the the top you know the tier one countries uh, are the ones that you know have the most money that spend the most money which is the US Canada UK Australia New Zealand and right now again this is just a great opportunity for um, you know merchants and, and, and advertisers to just advertise specifically 
to the the audience that is in the U.S. So you can also advertise uh, based on you know specific languages here, um, or all languages. You know, if you're speaking, uh, if you're advertising to only uh, U.S. speaking or you know English people in the U.S., you can select that. And then um, you know if you want to advertise on all devices or you just want to advertise on web, um, but not mobile, you can select that. And then gender specific, so male and female. You know. Uh, Pinterest is predominantly female and it's kind of stayed that way more and more males have gotten on to their platform but you know most of the people that you're you know probably going to reach are going to be female related because they're liking and pinning stuff and repinning stuff so anything related to like photography wedding uh, weight loss diet health nutrition recipes things like that um, tend to do well that seems to be the things that are shared most um, so if you're in that kind of niche or you have any kind of offer to promote then those would be great for this audience but you'll just have to play around and see um, what what offers are going to work best for you on this platform and then you've got a max cost per click bid so only pay uh, for clicks to your website so how much do you want to pay and you can click this learn more to kind of see how they how, how this bidding process works and then once you're ready to go you can um, click uh, pay or you know if you haven't set up billing you need to set up your billing account here but that's the basics it's very very simple I'm sure it's going to get more more, um, more, you know, detailed and complex as they develop their platform. But it's very, very simple. And the again, the the great opportunity about Pinterest right now is that they've just recently opened their um, their platform for advertisers. So it's just a great opportunity for folks like you and me to come in and um, just um, tap into that traffic source for whatever website or you know niche website or offer that you're trying to uh, to promote. Uh, you've got this as another advertising opportunity, another platform, in addition to places like Google and Facebook and SEO and uh, solo ads and things like that. All right, another um, another couple options for getting traffic, getting cheap traffic, are what's called paid to click sites. So, uh, paid to click is basically what it sounds like. Uh, you get paid like fractions of pennies to click on ads and offers. Um, some of the most popular sites that have been around forever are uh, ClickSense and Neobucks. These are ones that, you know, there's lots of others that come and go, but these are the ones that have stuck around for several years. And they're actually legitimate. So uh, one thing to keep in mind with these uh, sites is they, um, you know, if you don't log in for a couple of days, like they'll remove your account. Um, I don't have a Neobucks account. This happened to me twice because I didn't log in. I don't think they send you any alerts. Or maybe I was thinking, maybe they do, and I, I was thinking that that um, they surely wouldn't, you know, remove your account, but they will. And um, you have to sign up each time with like a new. Um, uh, uh, an account that or, or an email address that's tied to a separate PayPal account so I didn't want to bother to create another PayPal account so I burned through two accounts but um you know if you're going to sign up for this it's a pretty good um, platform here and can get you some cheap traffic quick um, then just make sure to log into your accounts like every seven days so that your accounts remain active and open. Uh, ClickSense is the same way. Um, the cool thing about ClickSense is that it's got um, a lot of different advertising options. Um, and the cool thing also with ClickSense is that you can target um, by demographic. So you can target by a specific country and also by length of time. So although it is cheap traffic, you can also target, you know, you can. Um, make the person that's viewing your ad be on your you know, website or your ad for um, you know 10 seconds 20 30 even a minute which is great because you know if you're trying to get blog traffic it you know it's better to have somebody on your website for longer than it is for you know two seconds it just has a really high bounce rate you know and you know most people that are in this mode that are clicking these ads they're not really you know, incentivized to stay on the site longer. Obviously, that's your goal as an advertiser to keep them on your website. But they're they're just trying to get pennies, you know, so they can add up to a dollar or whatever and cash out. So uh, it is cheap traffic for that reason. Um, but you know, the the way I would you know capitalize on these websites and use them is basically for that reason to kind of beef up your rankings or beef up your Alexa rankings and things like that on your website for your blog um, just get more traffic because it's not it's probably not going to convert that well um, maybe on some CPA offers you'll just have to 
um, you know, test out just like everything. But, um, it, you know, in Neobucks, I'm not really sure. I haven't played with their platform in a long time just because I haven't had an active account, but it works similar to um, ClickSense. I'm not really sure. I can't remember if you can um, target that specifically, but it's probably good traffic just because it's um, kind of a filtered community of people that, uh, like I said, they're all active. If they're not active, then they get their account, you know, deleted and you like they have no way to contact support so like you're not getting back in so you're basically you got to create another account um, so these are just a couple of solutions again um, the benefit I've seen from them is by you know is getting cheap traffic and just to kind of boost your convert uh, boost your um, your visitors uh, amount to your website to kind of boost your uh, Alexa ranking or other things that you know traffic would be helpful for uh, and you don't want to pay an arm and leg for so you know those are th these are two other options again just another source of traffic um, you know you may find some type of ad or offer that does convert on this traffic so there here is um, other options other solutions I encourage you to check them out depending on what you're doing so they are there and they're you know ones I've both used and um, I think they both have affiliate programs so you know it's another way to earn is to refer people and um, get paid on you know the referral commissions for people buying underneath you all right, in this video, I want to talk about retargeting ads. So retargeting is something that's been around for several years. Uh, when it originally rolled out, it was kind of more for bigger brands that could afford it. And then the prices dropped lower and lower to allow for the lower end advertiser, the one that didn't have as big of a bankroll and budget to come in and be able to um, retarget as well. There's a couple of companies out there that do it and now Facebook has their own retargeting platform. Used to be you have to go through uh, these uh, retargeting platforms that I'm going to recommend and um, introduce you to in this uh, video. But Facebook, if you're advertising on Facebook, you can actually retarget directly through Facebook, you know, using Facebook's own free tools uh, without having to go through one of these services. But the benefits of using uh, one of these services is it allows you to not only retarget in places like Facebook, but also all over the web. So in different areas, different uh, websites and domains that have um, have banner ads on them you can you know pop up wherever the user is browsing so it's very powerful and you know advertising has, as it evolves you know people change people evolve and uh, they get kind of banner blindness uh, to all the ads that they're um, shown on a daily basis so that's kind of why retargeting um, popped up and, and kind of um, sprang forward because I guess people weren't converting as high just directly for the first time. A lot of times it takes a couple of uh, messages before people actually, if they don't convert that first time, it takes about seven impressions for them to actually click again and maybe go through uh, your sales funnel and convert into a customer or, or lead. And so that's why um, retargeting is so powerful because you can follow up with them because a lot of people they click out or they get distracted or they forget and if you can, you know, uh, pop up your ad or offer again on places that they're hanging out already that maybe um, they you know they're not at a place where they found you originally then that's powerful because it can give them a little nudge and remind them oh yeah this is the thing that I was looking at this is the thing I was checking out so a couple of um, solutions are ad roll this is a pretty cool one it's uh, very cheap to get started and uh, that's the other benefit of retargeting uh, is the impressions and the you know the clicks and stuff it's significantly less than direct advertising so it often has a higher ROI a higher return on investment and return and you know conversions and stuff because people have already seen your ads are offered once and so uh, and it's cheaper so it's really just you know win-win for advertisers so you can get signed up with AdRoll and um, so you can get signed up with AdRoll and check them out by going to AdRoll.com another solution out there is perfect audience so they basically do the same thing it's just another uh, solution out there that uh, that offers retargeting service all across the web mobile devices and through Facebook so um, you know if you're advertising you want to have a presence other than on Facebook that's when these solutions would um, would you know 
when you would consider them but if you're doing you know exclusive advertising on Facebook you're actually good with just uh, Facebook's ads and then you know retargeting your customers on Facebook again you don't have any need to go through any one of these solutions but if you want a little bit wider reach uh, across the web um, to bring those customers and those leads back into your sales funnel then these are solutions that you uh, should consider and they're very easy to get started um, they each has uh, their different benefits um, and you know pros and cons and stuff but they're they're both pretty cool pretty good pretty good solutions um, um, but again uh, I think AdRoll has some you know these dynamic creatives which are pretty cool um, not sure if perfect audience has that but they all have um, you know they're very very cool solutions uh, something to look into um, once you get your your sales funnel and your advertising kind of refined uh, then you want to kind of look at expanding into these retargeting options but um, you know if you're just getting started I would start maybe on Facebook then use Facebook's out of the box you know free retargeting solutions then when you're ready to expand check out perfect audience or ad roll all right, in this video, I want to go over something that's called revenue sharing sites. So there are a lot of these similar to the pay to click sites, but these are two of the most popular ones at the time we're making this video. Again, these are websites that kind of change and evolve over time. Some, they kind of come and go, but these two have been around for a little while. One's called My Advertising Pays, one's called Traffic Monsoon. Basically, the gist of um, uh, revenue sharing sites is they have a lot of different ad uh, packages you don't have to um, do their revenue sharing packages but basically the kind of incentive behind it is you buy traffic you buy these ad packs and if you view other people's ads every day then you'll earn a percentage of the entire revenue that the website's bringing in so if you buy like a forty dollar ad not only are you getting other people to view your ad but you're also and you're getting that traffic so but you're also getting a return on your quote investment um, so you spend forty dollars on an ad maybe at the end of 30 days you'll get $52 back in uh, revenue um, assuming that other people are active in the community and are clicking on those all of the ads so a lot of people try to pitch and pitch this as a business opportunity I don't really like to look at it in that way because every business opportunity I've been involved in flops eventually um, these will eventually kinda die and then there will be new ones that pop up so um, I've just had bad experiences myself but I've seen people make thousands of dollars but uh, in these types of websites and you know programs or business opportunities if you want to call them that but the t people that are making the most money are ones that typically came in um, from day one with a lot of with thousands of dollars worth of these ad packs and on top of that had a lot of referrals that also did that same thing so there's a lot that they're not showing you um, that some of those leaders um, so just something to kind of take note of if you kind of Google these um, two two websites here but one thing that you know one thing that's pretty cool is that the traffic is pretty cheap it is real people because um, this is a community of, of, of members here and the while I don't like it for the fact that it's kind of a, a pool of people that's the same people that are you know potentially viewing your ads over and over and over again the type of people that are attracted to these networks are people that are interested in making money generally so if your offer is something that has to do with make money um, make money online things like that then this can be a great pool of traffic to tap into and siphon it to your lead page or siphon it to your offer or sales page um, temporarily you know while these uh, sites last because they will fade away the traffic will diminish over time um, but these are again two ones that are building momentum and have a lot of traffic um, so I mean just I, I see it as a pool of traffic similar to 
uh, Facebook or a stumble upon that's something that's probably not going to last forever. But while it lasts, tap into it, siphon as much of that traffic, as much as much of those visitors over to your offers, over to your email list, things that you uh, you know traffic sources that you can control that you don't have to repeatedly pay again and again for other than the cost of you know maintaining that mailing list um, but that's that's the advantage I see here again it's another solution for cheap traffic um, it's going to be a lot cheaper than places like um, generally places like Facebook and some of the other um, you know popular branded um, marketplaces out there so you know this is something that you if you're in the internet marketing space then you're probably seeing on news feeds uh, if you're connected with other internet marketers pitching this as a business opportunity again you know I wouldn't approach this with that business opportunity mindset that you're gonna get rich off of these um, platforms again you can make money but approach it like a business uh, business owner and you know this is a place where people are hanging out so this is a, um, a specific demographic of people that are interested in you know one thing which is making money making money online and uh, you can use that to your advantage uh, depending on what your offer is and you're probably not going to get a lot of conversions on like weight loss and you know um, other, other types of niches on here but if making money online is your um, if that's your what your offer or your service is then you probably have a pretty good chance of success or getting a couple of new clients or uh, members to your whatever your offer is from these platforms so definitely check them out they again this one's kind of messy that's another reason I don't like them uh, this one is um, a little bit cleaner and um, you know these are two reputable ones again these are kind of the nature of pay to click sites and revenue sharing ones are just kind of shady you don't know really if you're gonna get paid or not so I wouldn't lean on the fact that you're gonna get any of your money back just um, you know any advertising money that you that you put out there just um, you know put it out there in the, with the mindset that you can afford to lose that because you probably I mean you're probably not gonna get it back basically so um, check them out uh, this is another solution again if you're just trying to get quick blog traffic um, for very cheap that, that's uh, one so these are one solution that you can use for that um, but you know definitely worth checking out worth exploring all right, in this video, I want to go over a couple of solo ad traffic sources specifically for internet marketers, make money online niche. Um, now, what solo ads are, for those of you that don't know, is basically you're, you're, you're tapping into other people's email lists and they're giving you the opportunity to mail your offer to their audience and to their list. So uh, there's lists out there for all sorts of different um, demographics and niches. I've just listed some here on my website, imsource.org forward slash traffic. If you just come to imsource.org and scroll down here to traffic, um, the solo ad lists are up here at the top. And these are just ones I've collected over the years. This is just easiest for me to show um, rather than go through a couple of different examples or uh, options here. So these are all ones I've collected. The ones that I would point out are a power clicks the traffic source eager K fits solo ads agency um, dedicated emails traffic for me and my traffic source those are the ones that I would start out with um, again you know a lot of this is trial and error uh, you know solo ads are probably the most you know targeted and um, you know highest you know your highest chance of converting traffic basically out there uh, uh, compared to like Facebook ads or uh, Pinterest or, or Twitter or some of these other advertising options assuming that you know whoever you're um, sending your offer to has a decent list a decent relationship with their list uh, but it's going to be your quickest way to get traffic generally when getting started uh, another option would be like Facebook but Facebook you know you may be having to pay a little bit more for a click whereas here you know exactly how much you're paying for each click uh, you need to be tracking this which I'll go over that in a different um, a video but I recommend a solution called click magic if you are doing solo ads but these are again specifically for uh, internet marketing the make money online niche business opportunity this is mine this is more, more what this is what my niche is so these are the ones that are relevant to me um, now a lot of uh, people ask me you know are there solo ads for other niches and I kind of just answered that um, a few minutes ago yes of course uh, but again this is just kind of um, 
a website pertaining to internet marketing resources for mostly geared towards the make money online niche so these are the ones that I selected if you are in like the diet weight loss fitness um, niches or the survival niche there's lists out there um, dedicated emails is actually a good one that has a variety they are actual list brokers so they can help you with um, fitness and health and survival niches if those are your niches um, if you have a more specific or targeted um, you know product or service that you're trying to um, um, market and promote then again there are more specific lists out there so that's just one thing to note and the great thing about solo ads is generally at least with the internet marketing ones you can literally just give them your link and it's kind of a done for you at least some of the services that I've um, um, suggested here out of this list um, but the other uh, solo ad solutions like for other niches you may have to be you know you may be required to write like a little blurb or the your own message for the email that's going out so that's something to consider you uh, may want to read up on some you know copywriting conversion techniques and strategies um, in order to get that um, you know that solo ad crafted in a way that's going to get as many clicks as possible so that it can be as effective as possible um, and you can get as many clicks as possible again as much traffic to your offer uh, through that solo ad mailing but um, these are just uh, another traffic source again you know if you're just starting out um, and you're trying to build an email list this is one of the quickest ways to do it if you're not that skilled if you don't have a lot of copywriting skills and you just have an offer you just have a um, you know an opt-in you're trying to get people to opt-in then um, solo ads is probably going to be your best bet it's going to be your quickest um, you know solution there without having to be a master copywriter or anything like that so uh, great traffic source again it's all dependent on the quality of the traffic and a lot of times these vendors will have reviews so that's kind of how you can gauge that you can ask around but the ones I suggested are um, ones that I've used and have good have had good experiences with so um, again just go to imsource.org um, slash traffic and you can see all these solo ad traffic solutions that I recommend recommend again the ones that I would start out with are power clicks the traffic source Igor Kfetz his is gonna be uh, pretty good he's gonna take care of you but his is probably gonna be the most expensive um, solo ads agency dedicated emails traffic for me and then my traffic source those are the ones that I would start with and then you've got some other ones here that you can always try out All right, in this video I want to go over the importance of split testing and tracking the your, your ads and your advertising through paid traffic so with paid traffic you know you're basically what you're investing in what you're buying there is essentially data because nobody knows anything until you test things so the way you uh, figure out you know what ads work and what ads don't and what ads convert and you know the profitability of your your ads and your your different copy is through split testing um, tracking your links making sure you're not getting you know screwed by your traffic sources so in this video I want to go over a couple of essential tools um, and, and they vary based on uh, the different traffic sources that you're going to use but I just want to point out and highlight a couple of different tools that you may want to consider when buying traffic from these different sources that I recommend so the first one's called click magic this is going to be best used when you're uh, especially when you're doing uh, solo ad purchases because uh, you would basically cloak your uh, your uh, squeeze page or your landing page with a click magic link and then that's what you would give to the solo ad provider to make sure that you know you're tracking your traffic to make sure that you're getting all the clicks that you're um, supposed to be um, that are supposed to be delivered to you and you can also track which country those clicks are coming from and um, do a lot of other cool things you know rotate um, the link so kind of you know split test offers as well uh, and you're you know able to track all that within the back office of click magic so it's a really cool tool and um, you, and it's very affordable it comes with a free trial so that's the first one I recommend you can do a lot of um you know split testing all throughout different funnels say so if you have a whole funnel a bunch of different pages throughout the funnel you can do that with click magic is too so it's a really cool flexible you know very feature rich tool um, another one's called Improvely. So 
Um, you know, I haven't had a lot of experience with Improvely, but it's also a conversion tracking kind of click fraud monitoring uh, solution. But uh, the marketers that I've seen use it are, uh, you know, it's I feel like it's best used across multiple advertising platforms. So it's kind of hard, you know, on the internet to track the you know the path of a particular user across multiple different platforms so maybe they clicked your ad on Facebook and then they you know saw a retargeting ad and found you again on Bing or something like that and, and then converted that's kinda hard to measure without the proper tools and you know it's my understanding that Improvely can help you you know measure the lifetime value of a customer and the conversions uh, across multiple different platforms so if you're advertising on not just AdWords but maybe uh, Bing and Twitter and Facebook and you want to kind of see where the conversions happen and uh, you know where where your conversions are um, coming from for your sales funnel then Improvely is a the solution that I would recommend for you uh, as far as landing page um, to uh, as far as landing page tools for split testing, so for split testing like uh, copy and things like that, and buttons and button colors and things like that, uh, which are all very important, um, the Unbounce is a pretty cool tool for, that you can use for that. You don't have to be like a super um, technical wizard or anything like that. So uh, that's a really cool tool that you should check out. Um, for building, you know, customizable landing pages that you can, you know, rapidly um, switch out and um, split test different variables. Uh, another uh, couple tools that are, you know, you know, really useful and they're basically they, they have a lot more features than um, just split testing, but uh, they definitely have split testing built in. Um, are click funnels and then lead pages. These are mostly. Um, you know, you can build squeeze pages, uh, landing pages, sales pages, different you know types of funnels and stuff. But these are two tools that I own, um, and you and it's got uh, split testing built in the back office. So again, you can uh, create a couple different variations of pages to you know to split test and see which ones uh, convert the highest, and then you can cloak that link you know inside of a program like click magic and make sure that again you're not getting screwed on your links uh, if you're buying solo ads if you're uh, investing in you know pay traffic through like Pinterest or Twitter or Facebook I don't think you have to be so concerned about whether or not a click is a click and things like that but with solo ads when you're dealing with individuals um, you know you just want to protect yourself you know if you spend three hundred dollars on a solo ad for you know 300 clicks or 500 clicks you want to make sure that you're getting those 500 clicks you know if you just give them a raw link and you're not tracking it then you're in the dark on that data you're not really sure they delivered it you know if you don't see any results they can say yeah I, I sent that you know sent 500 clicks and you're like okay but because you know what do you know you, you weren't tracking it so um, you know it's very important to split test it's very important to track your uh, your traffic and your ads because that's really the only way that you know anything. It's all about the data, and I know that's kind of you know for someone like myself and you, know, you may who, who and and you watching this video, you know you may be uh, kind of overwhelmed with you know testing and tracking, and it's something that I avoided for a long time because I didn't want to think about it. I just was happy you know being ignorant and going out there and buying ads and wondering why they didn't work, but from the beginning one of the big things that is going to be a deciding factor between your success and if you're not successful is investing in some of these tools and again they're not very expensive but you need to you know factor them into your marketing budget uh, from the get-go um, because it's just going to help you um, analyze the data you know and actually have data to analyze up front from the beginning without having to do a lot of guesswork so I highly encourage you to check out some of these tools depending on which traffic sources that you're going to be investing in all right in this video I want to talk about sticking with one traffic platform so there are tons and tons of different resources that you're going to learn about in this course and if you go to imsource.org forward slash traffic you could see some other traffic sources there's so many different options out there. My best advice for you, just like you know, anything that you're doing online or in life, is just to stick with something long enough to become a master of it. Now, if you stick with it for a long time, you can't be 
become a master at it, you can't get it to convert or whatever, at least you're going to learn more about that traffic source than most people um, know about it because you've spent a lot of time trying to test and tweak things so that, you know, at the end of it, maybe you can come out with a course and sell it, you know, and educate people on that particular traffic source if it's, you know, legitimate. Um, because you know they're so easy to get distracted just like there's it's so easy to get distracted with these little high P tools and plugins uh, you know and softwares you know for five ten seventeen you know twenty seven dollars and get distracted from what's actually working uh, for you right now or you know what you're working on currently you may just hop over and try something else before you even gave it a chance to be successful so you know if you're uh, doing solo ads then commit to learning solo ads you know and mastering that and um, you know you, you may have to switch between different solo ad providers to find the best traffic source but master that traffic source if you're doing stumble upon then um, spend enough time on stumble uh, stumble upon then spend enough time on stumble upon testing different links testing different offers testing different you know uh, strategies in order to get that traffic to convert and just you know master different strategies and techniques um, again you, uh, by the end of uh, spending a lot of time and, and you're probably gonna spend a lot of money too eventually um, you're gonna become a master of that traffic source and you can um, you know create a course around it or you can become an expert and get people to pay you to for you to teach them how to you know master that traffic source and uh, you know potentially make all your money back for your you know coaching advice on that particular traffic source. So stick with stick with something long enough to become you know very proficient at it instead of just hopping around trying to um, spread out your budget across ten different traffic sources. And you know yeah you're gonna get traffic but none of them do very well. And then in a short amount of time you run out of money because you just didn't take uh, you didn't have enough resources to. You didn't have enough resources to um, to scale any one of those um, or to become a master at, at any one of those traffic sources. So, my best advice is to stick with one traffic source. You know, pick one, stick with it, and uh, you know, become the best in your industry at that particular traffic source. Then, once you've mastered that one, then you can move on to others and explore you know other uh, alternative traffic sources. All right, this is um, one of my favorite advertising sources here. This is called Stumble Upon, and you know, Stumble Upon has been around for a couple of years. I really like it because um, it actually is a solution for something that I've been doing for years, long before uh, Stumble Upon came around. Was I was manually saving and bookmarking websites that I came across. So, because you know, you you may forget about them, you may not uh, remember that site that you visited uh, a long, long time ago. So I was creating manual files and manual bookmarks, and um, Stumble Upon is, is is really cool because it allows you to save and bookmark um, all these uh, websites and um, that you come across, and you can store them in your Stumble Upon account. And uh, what's interesting about Stumble Upon as opposed to other marketplaces and you know places that you can advertise is when people are stumbling they are actually engaged so places like Facebook and um, Google you know they're going to Google to search for something they're going to Facebook to hang out with friends they're going to stumble upon to actually find new and engaging relevant content to things that they like things that they like they give it a thumb up and things that they don't they give it a thumbs down and the way that the advertising works is basically it just appears as just another piece of content so and there's a little um, indication that it's an ad but there's not like in your face like what you're looking at as an ad so they're they don't necessarily aren't really aware that they're being marketed to plus they're in the mood they're in the zone to find new engaging stuff so it's really a, a unique advertising platform and it can get you a lot of traffic a lot of relevant targeted traffic very fast I'm not going to I do have an account I'm not going to log in but it's um, the because these uh, pictures here kind of show you how how it's um, set up but Got a couple different advertising options here. Basically, most people watching this video are going to go the self-serve pay-as-you-go route. You can start as low as like $10 a day, I believe. And um, it's it's very simple. It works like a lot of other advertising platforms. You just um, plug in your um, website that you want to advertise. Give it a give your um, campaign name. Select your 
you know, targeting age group, male, female, devices, locations. Um, you got interest bundles, or you can uh, target by specific interest. Um, and then you've got, you set your budget basically. And they start, once your advertising campaign is approved, they start delivering traffic immediately. So it's a great way to get very cheap traffic for um, uh, very fast. And uh, you can scale up pretty big. Um, it's about 10 to 15 cents, sometimes a little more per click, but it's as low as 10 cents um, per click or per visitor, which is extremely um, extremely affordable, especially if you're trying to get traffic to a blog post, you're trying to kind of get some likes and shares and engagement going to uh, new content that you produced. Um, it's a really cool platform and there's a lot of things that you can, um, you know, just use your imagination and kind of um, figure out how you can tweak it. I'm not going to go into detail in this video, but um, there's a lot of different options here. And again, you know, for being a more affordable or cheaper traffic source, it's a great, um, you know, source for more engaged content, engaged visitor for that uh, amount. Because a lot of these cheaper traffic sources, they, they're, they're cheap for a reason. You're not really sure if they're bots or if they're actual real people, like where are they getting this traffic from? Um, but stumble upon real company, you know, they've been around for several years um, and it's, you know, real people, real engaged um, I mean, visitors that are going to be coming to your website. Um, so I would highly recommend checking out stumble upon um, ads, which is called paid discovery. Um, or I may have switched to stumble upon ads now, but it used to be called paid discovery. I believe it's an under tapped, traffic you know resource that not a lot of internet marketers or marketers only marketers in general um, really uh, pay much attention to if they do they're not really making much courses about it but it is a decent network of traffic to tap into and it's a uh, it's great uh, for beginners very beginner friendly especially for the price you can get thousands and thousands of visitors for just a couple hundred bucks and you can't do that on other platforms so i encourage you to check it out um, so I definitely encourage you to check out Stumble Upon ads. All right, in this video, I wanted to go over uh, Twitter ads. So Twitter, in the last year or two or so, has recently opened up their platform. Uh, again, similar to Pinterest and some of these other platforms, the other social media marketplaces and platforms out there, um, they've just basically they haven't really had a monetization strategy. There hasn't haven't really opened up their doors to advertisers like you and me until recently in the uh, recent you know last couple of years so I just searched uh, Twitter ads here and if I click the first one um, you can see uh, you know it'll take you to this page uh, if you click the other one it'll take you to uh, this Twitter for business page it'll tell you a little bit more about their products and kind of what your different options are here. So first you're gonna obviously need a Twitter account. You don't need to sign up for a special like business account or anything like that. I'm just gonna sign into one of my accounts here. And then, you know, if you click let's go, they'll just ask you some other questions to get some more information about your business. But if you just go to your, um, but if you just go to, you know, back to Twitter, back to your, you know, main account here, your main account dashboard, and then come up here to your little icon here of your profile, come down here under Twitter ads, then it'll take you to a, uh, a dashboard for your ads here. I don't have any running, but you've got your little analytics tab up here. So once you've got some ads running um, and to create a new one, you just come up here to create new campaign and you can see all the different options, kind of like Facebook ads. They give you a couple of different goals. So what's your goal with your uh, tweets? Is it to get more followers? Is it to get website clicks and conversions? Uh, so you've got all these different uh, variables here, uh, these different goals. And you know, based on what whatever your marketing strategy is, whatever you're trying to get, um, whether it be more followers or more clicks and conversions, for most marketers, it's probably going to be clicks and conversions because you want um, you want people to come to your website basically, but you've got all these different options here. You know, if you're doing advertising videos, you want to get views on it really quickly. Um, then, you know, you just get all these different, um, goals here and Twitter is going to optimize your campaign for whatever goal that you select. So I'm just going to select for this example, website clicks or conversions. And then it's going to take me to this campaign setup page. So I'm just going to put in, um, so I'm just going to put in, you know, test campaign, and uh, 
scroll down here you can uh, start this ad immediately or you can you know customize when you want to start and end this if you have a specific date in mind um, you can set up you know specific locations so you know the benefit of you know having different marketplaces to advertise on is some of the different marketplaces allow you to target different demographics and different things that the other marketplaces don't and I'll kind of get go into that a little deeper as we scroll down here but you can select specific locations so that's great uh, if you want to target people in just the US or just your country you can do that on Twitter um, gender specific here specific languages specific devices so people that are only on you know desktops or if you want to target just their mobile devices you can do that uh, and then you've got this is this is really unique here so we get you know you target by keywords you can target by uh, followers interest um, all these different behaviors event targeting um, what I like is the followers because this is unique this is something that Facebook doesn't allow you to do you can you have you can drill down pretty deep um, pretty targeted with interest and uh, different likes and things like that in um, in Facebook but you can't target by like specific Facebook fan page so you can't you know if, if like a specific celebrity or uh, a specific website has a large following you can't target that audience unfortunately but you can with Twitter so if a celebrity or someone uh, important in your industry or niche has a large following you can target people that follow that particular person so it's you know every advertising platform is unique that's why I want to uh, share uh, all these different options that you have available because um, they're they're all different they all have their benefits and they're all their you know pluses and minuses pros and cons so we scroll down here there's a bunch of other different options that we can target and if we scroll down here at the bottom we can kind of see like the estimated reach uh, as we're adjusting these different um, options down here and then we get to the end here and um, you can set your budget of how much you want to spend per day or how much your total um, uh, budget is and then how you want to you know price your bids if you want to keep it at automatic or you've got a couple of different other options here and then you know you know as you'll uh, you get down here at the bottom you get your creative so you can write your tweet upload your images um, or, or your text and customize your ad here and um, you know then you can uh, save and schedule your campaign so it's just as simple as that and um, you know I haven't honestly done a lot of advertising on Twitter this isn't really my um, advertising platform but you know, every advertising platform, again, is different. You may find your success for your particular product or um, service. It, you know, you may find success on Twitter as opposed to like Facebook. You know, a lot of people are having uh, success on Facebook, but Twitter may be your avenue, um, you know, as opposed to some of the other popular marketplaces so you really just have to test and tweak and and try and, and figure things out but I just wanted to share uh, this brief overview of how to use the Twitter platform because again it's just another advertising um, platform and marketplace for you to get your messages out there for you to um, reach uh, laser target you know your your demographic and your ideal um, you know prospects and customers All right, in this video I want to talk about uh, sales funnels and how they work this is kinda how you need to think about structuring your offers so you know when I first got started in online marketing um, I was just a consumer I didn't know how things worked on the back end and it wasn't until somebody took me by the hand and showed me what was actually going on in their sales funnels what was going on in the back end what sort of you know process they were leading their customers through uh, it was only until I saw that that I really understood how everything worked with internet marketing and you know making money and breaking even and you know just um, you know building a business online so this is a basic sales funnel this is how pretty much everything that you've ever been through works um, there's uh, you know you can make this as extensive as you wish and kind of have upsells and downsells and stuff but I'm just gonna walk you through um, you know how to lay out a basic you know offer or series of offers or sales funnels in your business and kind of how to think about structuring the information that you're presenting to sell so first we have traffic over there on the left this is can be from anywhere whether it be Facebook or Pinterest or you know Instagram or uh, retargeting it doesn't matter where the traffic's coming from but it, you know this is the fastest way to get 
um, visitors to your offers to buy the traffic. Yes, you can do SEO, but it's kind of labor intensive and it takes time and it can be potentially expensive. So it's best to just find a targeted traffic source um, that's you know targeted to whatever offer that you're trying to promote and send traffic directly to that offer. Now, you're not going to send them directly to a sales page because people have been trained over the last, you know, decade or two decades that, you know, most people just don't convert on that, you know, first impression. Um, in fact, most of your traffic will never, you know, never convert, period. You know, you may get like one to two percent if you're lucky, uh, assuming that it's very targeted traffic. But you need to be, uh, as a business, you know, your most important asset is your list. So you need to be building a list. That way you can at least remarket to them uh, if they don't buy on that first impression. So you need to capture that lead through a lead page or a squeeze page. And usually the way that you do that is through an incentive freebie offer, whether it be a plugin or a download or a, a video offering value or a uh, ebook of some sort. And usually this is, um, you know, some small but um, valuable tip in your your niche that people really you know really it's kind of they really want the answer to um, something that's really intriguing to them or something that could provide a lot of value to them but it doesn't take a lot to create so something that's very um, you know short simple quick to create but provides a lot of value maybe a, a checklist or a cheat sheet things like that and then from there then you'll send them to a front end offer and usually this is just to get them to initially you know pull out their um, pull out their wallet spend a dollar with you or you know I've got seven dollars here just a low price you know front end offer um, to trust you and to buy from you again and again and you need to get them to know like and trust you with that front end offer so you really want to massively over deliver on it just make it a irresistible offer and once they buy from you it's going to be a lot easier to get them to um, easily you know upsell them on a you know a more advanced product or a faster way of doing you know what you sold them in the front and the front end you know you don't want to scam people you don't want to you know sell them the front end and say well to really succeed you do actually need the upsell you want them to have everything they need for success in the front end offer and then the upsell a, a, and a way to uh, go about creating an upsell is make it be a solution where they can achieve the front end offer faster. That's usually a a good strategy. So if it's software, you know, or information, then it's like how can they achieve the results in you know the front end offer faster? That's a, a good way to go about the upsell. Or you know the upsell it can be. A, a membership site um, so that would be bringing recurring revenue for you so that's another way to kind of build some build some build some stability into your business um, and then you've got the back end which is your high ticket um, offers it can be you know something of a lot more massive value a lot of times this is like coaching or some sort of a high you know ticket high value webinar and this, usually this is like ninety seven dollars one ninety seven a thousand dollars this is where you're really going to make a lot of your profit in your business. So the you know this is the basic structure. Again, you can have like upsells and you know infinite you know down sales for people that you know didn't buy the front end offer. Maybe it's like, well, you didn't buy it for seven. You can buy. How about one dollar? You know, if they didn't buy the upsell, how about you know instead of seventeen dollars, how about seven dollars? You know, you can add all kinds of different variations. But this is just a very basic uh, you know sales flow sales funnel overview and kind of the structure is laid out in a way so you got the traffic the lead page is to capture as many leads so you can remarket to them add them to your email list the front end offer the whole goal in that is to help cancel out your traffic costs so that you at least break even that should be your goal and then the upsell is to, again to kind of help cancel out the traffic cost and you know potentially you can um, uh, you know make a profit there but you're probably not going to you know make a huge profit there most of your profit is going to be made in your back end when you're remarketing to them whether it be promoting your own offers or promoting someone else's offers uh, that you recommend 
or selling your own high ticket back end products. So this is a basic sales funnels overview. This is something that you need to keep in mind when you're buying before you ever spend a dime on paid advertising. You need to have a sales funnel in place. It doesn't have to be, you know, completely ironed out. Obviously, it's kind of uh, you know, buying traffic and creating a offer is sort of like, you know, the chicken and the egg scenario. You you kind of need them both, but which which do you need first? You obviously need an offer, but the only way that you know if it converts or not is by buying traffic so you're just going to you know treat this like a business and um you you know you're gonna have to spend some money in order to make some money but again you're not when you're spending money on traffic um don't approach it with the mindset of i'm wasting money you're basically the first you know maybe the first couple hundred first couple thousand dollars you're basically investing in data so that you know you can understand that traffic source, you understand what they respond to, and then from that data, you can take that, analyze it, and you know, tweak your sales funnel in order to optimize conversions. And really, you know, that at that point you should be trading, you know, a dollar worth of advertising to you know a dollar fifty or two dollars worth of profit. And once you get to that level, then you can just afford to spend as much money as you you know you can get your hands on uh, for that traffic source. So hopefully that gives you a good solid overview of uh, sales funnels and how they work and how you can use them in your paid traffic, your paid marketing strategies.